Hey, hey, you, you. How's it going? I'm your host, Rhiannon Walker, and I'm here to run you through the Sports Day High School Top 10 Replays of the Week. Thank you to all the coaches who sent me video and the fans who sent me video this week. Got some video from Versus this week and last, so I want to say thank you to them as well. There's no way I can do my show without the people shooting the films in the first place, so thank you guys again. Truly mean it. And one more week before the playoffs, but let me not get too far ahead of myself. We've still got one more week here and the next, so let's get things started. DeSoto's going to kick things off for us this week, literally, not figuratively. After Midlothian scored 14 straight points, Katie Nixon takes this kickoff from the Eagles' own five, and he changed directions three or four times in about the same amount of seconds. Oh, he's a slippery one. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm always banking on someone named KD to score when the ball's in their hands. So, just saying, DeSoto beat Midlothian 38 to 22. Number nine, Episcopal's Dominic Williams runs into substantial tra traffic up the middle. So, Williams, uh, what does he do but bounce the play to the edge and guess what? He finds the yards on the pay dirt. Williams finished with 214 yards and two scores as Parish Episcopal beat Grapevine Faith in a nail biter 49 to 45 to maintain the number one spot in the DNM Small Schools rankings. Jerry Harper holds the number eight spot in this week. Brent Easton drops back, looks left, looks right, drops back some more before he throws a dart to Harper, who has two defenders nearby. He tips it up, tips it again, and corrals it with one hand for the 16-yard touchdown. Summit lost to top-ranked Lake Ridge, 55-35. Number seven, Richardson's Michael Johnson does a quick three-step drop, throws a nice spiral to Khalil Lacey, who not only one hands the reception, but snags it over the defenders' heads. You go, dude. Richardson would, defeat, would be defeated by Mesquite. 62 to 29, however. Forney's Michael Prox must have had grease slicked all over his uniform because there wasn't a single soul on that field that could get a grasp on him. I mean, defenders were just falling off of him left and right. And then, run, Michael, run for this 85-yard touchdown in Forney's 44 to 27 victory over West Mesquite. Number five, here is Sanger's CJ Jackson taking a few steps back and letting her rip down the left sideline for Trent McMillan, who has a defender face guarding him for what looks like a 34-yard reception. What concentration by McMillan? Now, I don't think the refs picked up the flag in this game, kind of like how they did it with Anthony Hitchens in the Cowboys wildcard game against Detroit last year. I know Cowboys fans are happy about that. Sanger would beat Wilmer Hutchins at home, 58 to 34. Timberview is out here making the stats guy's life so, so hard, number four. Devin Williams passes his ball to Jalen Loftus on the slant, and then Loftus tosses it back to Braylon Royal, who's running behind him. Royal then takes this thing 60 yards through the house. I'm sure that's exactly how the coach drew it up. I, I'm so sure. Timberview runs away with it, 51-28 over Legacy. Number three, this is Tylen Wallace going long here for South Hills after QB Trey Jones has to climb the pocket and receives a big hit following the release. Wallace makes the adjustment and with one hand catches the ball in his bread basket, breaks the second tackle, and walks in for the 78-yard score. Easy money, my friends. After holding Lovejoy scoreless for the first time all season, Wiley found himself needing a field goal to break the tie to avoid overtime. I've been waiting for a game-winning field goal selection. None better than Brandon Cunningham nailing this 43-yarder with one second on the clock to keep Wiley's playoff dreams alive. Wiley defeats Lovejoy 34-31. Now, I was hoping that Cunningham was going to break out into Justin Tucker game-winning field goal dance, but hey, no luck there, and I'm not going to dance for y'all. So now, our top play this week isn't necessarily creative. It wasn't especially flashy, although the refs would disagree with me, but it was historic. Well, how historic, you ask? It hasn't happened in 45 years. In case that wasn't enough of a hint for y'all, I shall sing a small tune. Everywhere we go, people want to know who we are, so we tell them we are the Tigers. That's right. The top play in this week's segment goes out to Mansfield, who defeated Cedar Hill, and they won, the, and they won their district. Mansfield was the underdog in its game against Cedar Hill. I won't mince words there. After Kennedy Brooks scored to put the Tigers ahead 46-43, the defense just had to hold for the final one minute, 16 seconds. Cole Brignac flies into the scene, intercepts the pass, raises his arm because there is nothing but pasture in front of him. The refs would call a taunting, so the touchdown was wiped out, but the final score didn't change as Mansfield defeated Cedar Hill 46-43 at home. All right, guys, that's it for the Week 10 edition of the Top 10 Replays. Check back next week for all the highlights from Week Number 11. To have video on the show, please send me links to my Twitter account, at Instant Replay, see below, or send compressed files to my email account, rwalker at dallasnews.com. Thanks for hanging with me, folks. See ya.